Libertarian incompatibilists talk about two different kinds of freedom of will, both of which are incompatible with determinism by definition. The first type of libertarian free will requires that one could have done otherwise. This is by definition not possible under determinism. Choosers can only have chosen otherwise if some physical events themselves could have turned out otherwise. This makes indeterminism a necessary condition for the truth of incompatibilism. But the reality of indeterminism is not sufficient to grant us a libertarian free will because indeterminism might turn out to be true, and yet a chooser could lack the freedom to shape future events. Unless a chooser can play some role in defining which chance events can happen or in altering the probabilities of events turning out this way or that, chance just happens to the chooser randomly. This is the point where Hume and many other thinkers got stuck, seeing no alternative between determinism, where outcomes are beyond one's control in the sense that they are preset before one's even born, and blind chance, where again, one has no control over what happens. Later in this course, I'll argue that there is a middle way between determinism and complete randomness. But let's say that some brains can weigh options and then select among them thereby affecting the probability that one option will occur over another. For example, a tiger trying to hunt down a tapir in the Sumatran jungle might have such freedom. It can see the tapir and weigh possible paths towards killing it, then choose an optimal option, given all the variables that it has internally weighed. It might want to maximize speed or minimize distance traveled, maximize quietness, and so on. It might have a first order type of libertarian free will, but this might not be enough to have a truly free will. For that, a chooser would need what might be called a meta free will or a type two libertarian free will. According to this notion of free will, the chooser must have freedom of action that allows the shaping of the nature of future decisions and future acts of choosing. In effect, the chooser must be able to shape the basis or grounds of future volitional decisions. The chooser must be able to choose the kind of being he or she will become in the future. This seems like a tall order, but really the seeds of this idea were already discussed in Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics. The idea is that humans, at least, can choose to become new kinds of choosers. This might involve years of practice, but a libertarian advocate of free will like myself would argue that this is doable. For example, you can decide to learn a foreign language. You can install an app on your phone and begin teaching it to yourself. After one year of practice, you might be pretty good. After three years of hard study and practice, you would likely be quite fluent. You will effectively have willed to become a new kind of nervous system, namely one that can process sentences in the foreign language that you chose. Note that no tiger does this. No tiger says to itself, next year I want to become a new kind of tiger, say one that eats fewer tapirs and eats more pangolins. It's quite possible that only humans have this second order type of freedom. We can not only choose what to do, think, or feel now, we can also choose what we want to become and then set about realizing that vision of ourselves. I believe that the human brain has evolved to realize both kinds of libertarian free will. We can consider options and choose among them, thereby affecting the likelihood of one possibility happening over others. This we have in common with other complex animals like tigers. But unlike other animals, I believe we have second order libertarian free will as well. Namely, we can choose with practice to become a new kind of chooser in the future. Your future self might have options that are not open to you now, like choosing to speak in a foreign language that you cannot yet understand.